Things are getting pretty morbid around here. I just washed my hair, hence this beautiful uh, hairdo I've got going on. So today I'm going funeral dress shopping. I'm going to New York tomorrow. My great aunt passed away last week and yesterday another one of my cousins passed away. So I'm gonna be the lady walking around talking to herself slash camera um, in the dressing room. So it's gonna be great, I think. Kind of like this, but in a grandma kind of way. How much would the family hate me if I showed up in black leather? Like, yeah, but like, no. The mirror is kind of gross. It's cute, but I feel like a fish. So far, this trip has done a great job of reminding me that I hate shopping for clothes. Well, I found something, and so I guess that's a wrap. Truthfully, there's no easy segue into talking about death, so I won't even try. So there have been two deaths in my family um, in the past week and a half, and there have been three deaths in my family in total this summer. And typically I think that would leave a person speechless, but you know me, I have a lot to say. I've had a lot of experience with death. That first experience was when I was five. It was around nine o'clock and my mom was taking my clothes out of the closet and putting them in a bag. And I said, well, what are you doing? And she said, I'm packing. We have to go to New York. Your Aunt Marie passed away. Since then, I've had quite a few experiences with death. I think I've been to uh, maybe 14 funerals of people that I've known and actually loved. And then there are about three others that I, you know, kind of knew people that I knew and I went to their funeral. I've dealt with a lot of death in my life um, and I think that in doing so I've learned a lot. I remember when my favorite aunt was dying when I was an undergrad, uh, one of my friends told me, I'm so sorry you're going through this, like I've never dealt with this. Nothing really bad ever happens to me. And I remember wanting to punch her in the face but also wanting to kind of educate her. I kind of realized, you know, I'm knowledgeable as hell on the subject of death, like ask me anything. Thought I would share what I have learned from my experiences with death. When someone you love dies, you really sometimes don't know who to lean on. And sometimes people will surprise you. I have always had a problem with viewing uh, dead people. I don't really like to look at corpses or whatever. I was 12 when my pap pap died and it was my sister, my little sister, who held my hand going up to the casket and kind of encouraged me all the way up there. His was the first actual like body that I went to view um, and it was really difficult because he died of cancer so he was he did not look the way he used to look um, when he was living. So that's the first thing. You will sometimes be surprised by who will support you in times of death. The second thing when you're dealing with the death of a loved one, I think, is knowing your boundaries and your limits. This past week when my cousin died, my roommate and I had a lot of things planned for the evening and when I heard in the morning, I texted my roommate and I let her know, just so you know, I'm not doing anything after work today. Don't ask me for anything. Don't ask me to do anything because it's done, it's canceled, it's a wrap, I can't. But boundaries also apply to things like, you know, who you're gonna speak with for the week, what you're gonna do during your grieving process, those kind of boundaries. You don't have to be the best girlfriend when someone dies, I remember. I'm not even gonna go into that story. Anyway, um, but yes, uh, boundaries are important when you lose someone. Oh gosh, <clears throat> not going to cry. When you love a lot of people, say you have a big family or you have a lot of friends, you end up dealing with a lot of loss. Also, that's just the way it is. So if you're blessed to have a lot of people to love, you have to also consider that a lot of people will leave and that's just life. The other side of that is that um, there's always some sort of gain in your loss.
some of the strongest relationships in my family kind of solidified themselves in the face of death. I have this one cousin who, who would always come over, but when my grandma died, he, he came over that very day. And since then, you know, I have always seen him with my dad, always. He and my dad are like this. I have one cousin and when her brother died, another cousin said to her, you will never be alone again. And they are also like this. I think it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes, you know, one person loses someone and then the other person steps in and they form a bond like no other. The last thing and one of the things that really, really pull me through um, in times like this is that um, in my experience, nothing beats the way people just come together in times of loss. Like, my family is so lit. Like, we always come together and I think that's why we're so tight. We've lost so many people and we've lost so much, but each time we go through something like that, we always just kind of cling to each other, you know? I'm lucky, I'm not lucky. I'm incredibly blessed. People often say to me, I'm so sorry, like I don't know how you get through it, or you know, I, I'm sorry you have to go through this kind of thing, and it's really not as bad because I have a family like the one I have. So, anyway, just wanted to share that because, because I felt like it. This is my channel, I do what I want. Thanks for watching. I just washed my Um, uh, um, um, uh, first of all, you don't say stuff like that. Ooh, you're gonna have to give me a minute. So damn blind. And secondly, ew, gross. Still hate it. Get it together. Excuse me. I burped through her off. I was like, don't touch me. Anyway, boundaries, okay. So, you know, don't worry about me. I'm gonna be fine.